Hello. My name's host Derek, and I'm the host of Talking with Fantasy People. I'm here with host Tiffany, the host of Talking with Fantasy People. And we are talking about ENTP terror. I might do it wrong. So, specifically, what we were chatting about on the phone before we switched over to go to meeting for the purpose of recording it is our fears as younger people of of not not interpreting stuff right from somebody you're interested in like fear of making a move because you might do it wrong or whatever so Tiffany had related a story and I had related a story uh, both of which were the gist of it for the same thing which is there's a chick there with you, and Tiffany, take it from there. <laughs> I'll, you do you, yours, and I'll tell mine. Well, okay, so for me, uh, the story he's referencing goes back to when I first started going to college, and um, I had met this girl during orientation, and we hit it off. We were having fun. We, hang out, we hung out together the whole time during orientation, and then uh, first day of college rolls around, and we get together and we're hanging out and having a good time. We go to a party that night. And I mean, looking back on it, logically, I should have no logically, rationally, irrationally, doesn't matter how you look at it. I should have known that she liked me. She was into me. She, she wanted to do stuff with me, but I wasn't sure. I was clueless. I wasn't clueless, but I was, and I was scared. And we were at this party standing outside for at least 20 minutes with her kind of staring at me, giving me the make a move look until she finally got fed up and started kissing me. And I said, oh, thank God. Because I was never going to make that move. Never. I was well, never going to make that move. Well, Tiffany, listen. When she's standing there looking at you like that, it could be that that look means she wants to go parasailing. You, that's, you, that's, that's my concern. You were wise to hang back. You were wise. You weren't sure. <laughs> I mean, heaven forbid that you be so presumptuous as to think that some female might actually be okay with you touching her body, right? <laughs> that, that, that's sort of the uh, that's sort of the underlying narrative to that too, for me anyway. Which is my early experience, and I've talked to you before about like awful adolescent social stuff, but my my earlier experience in life it was made very clear to me by my peers that I was of the population that was not to be included in such stuff, you know? So... Yeah, same. And then when you get a little bit older and you realize, Jesus Christ, I spent an entire childhood of having people tell me who I am and tell me how I... If I'm if I'm not that, there's something wrong with me. Telling me who who I ought to be, telling me what I need to do, and it's all it's all ontological violence. It's difficult to imagine that there's something right about a system. It forces kids to remain in places where their very nature is negated day after day, year after year. To me, it's appalling that we allow it to persist. And it's not just the other kids who are negating our natures, it's the teacher as well. Every teacher goes into their classroom and they've got to Establish this is their domain. They've got to run a tight ship. But their version of a tight ship is very much more often than not simply a manifestation of their own biases and only lo loosely linked to actual educational outcomes and, no and ignorantly blind, not even willfully blind, ignorantly blind of of the violence they're doing casually.
that got pretty deep. Yeah, it was pretty lighthearted when we were talking before we started the video, huh? <laughs> it got real serious. Well, it is serious. I mean, I it is serious. I feel the same way. Um, I I think it's probably why we're so adverse to um, utilitarian ways of thinking, because at least when it comes down to personality type, when it comes down to the way we think, and I'm not... But the way we think is pretty unique compared to other people. And the systems that are set up to benefit the majority don't benefit us. Well, the thing is, I, there, there's, whatever they're set up to do, we offer an awful lot of benefit of the doubt to systems when they do correlate with good outcomes. And we also tend not to look at less direct impacts, you know? And so I think that that's one of the problems we have with, with standardized constraints, which is to say rules, laws that are not subject to situational modification or in which the situational modification of them is too labor intensive on the part of the person being subjected to the law. So I my problem is there's, it's, it's an opposite worldview from the NITE bunch. And not to say that it's like, I love INTJs and I don't think they're authoritarians or anything. But what I mean is by an opposite worldview is simply that um, TI wants consistency in your reasoning and they want flexibility in the application of things. And that's the opposite for, for the NITE bunch. They want flexibility... They want flexibility in their reasoning. It doesn't need to be consistent with something else as long as it works. But they don't want, and, and they want um, consistency in their application. So they know their action is going to have this, this causal impact and not that one. I think the other thing to say about that is that the individual human beings who are impacted by these TE driven protocols, that they themselves like abstract models are not, ought not be subject to the same metrics as physical forces that are not agent that are not sentient agents. So yeah, I can I can know how to use electricity and I can cause this causal impact on something uh, by utilizing my my NITE kind of sciencey stuff. And sure enough the physical world behaves in predictable ways when we execute force vectors along the following ways. But that's not you shouldn't people shouldn't be thought of as in the current status quo, they made people like that too. That oh well, the people, the people need to have educated children. People need to have educated children. People, well, who are you talking about? You know that, that that's the thing. Are you which people? Everybody, everybody needs to do what now? Who are you saying everybody else needs to do? Because don't say everybody. Don't say people. So there's fucking, like, you know, authoritarians and shit who just love stated them. Stop saying things like people. Say, I want this for me. Or I want you to have to do this. I want only first and second person from you. <laughs> fucking authoritarian. Status. You want to call a spade a spade. 
Yeah, right. We need to protect our children. Blah, blah, blah. I want to put you in jail, Eric, if you do this. I will be there myself to use the weapon, to use violence against you because you, you put something in your body that I don't like. Make, say that to me. Say that it's okay for you to do that. Because then, then what happens is then I get, I get to say, oh, okay, well, I don't like it when you put broccoli in your body. Can I run over there and uh, use violence against you if you do that? And then all of a sudden, there comes a question when it's two human beings doing things to each other. But when it's the people, we have problems. There's never any person. That's why public school, no matter how much people are accustomed to it and think, ah, oh, it's not that bad, it's pretty good, nothing's perfect, you can't have everybody be happy. public school is good? Who thinks it's good? A lot of people. I've never met anyone that doesn't have good things to say about any public school system. Well, then why aren't, why aren't people advocating, marching in the streets for getting rid of it? Because they're sheep. No, because what they'd say is this. Look, there's problems in the public school system. Nobody's denying that. And yes, we need reform, and we need to address this, and we need to blah, 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 blah. We need to fix all these problems. But by and large, they're, this this industry is made up of good people with good intentions trying to do the best they can for the kids of this country. Stuff like that. And nothing yeah, saying, that's just indoctrination. But look, here's the thing. Nothing they're saying there is untrue. It, it In the status quo... In our existing paradigm, the way we understand things, it's not that bad. Most kids get out of there more or less not super damaged. Not all of them, but most of them. And, you know, for a lot of types that... I'm not, it, I'm not even upset about the damagement argument, though. I don't think they're coming out of the system better off than when they went in by enough to warrant it. I, I know, but look, what I'm telling you is that without a framework shift... The argument that's going to end up winning is the one that assumes the utilitarian justifications and assumes its own solvency. That assumes that in the absence of its monolithic, market-distorting, black hole self, that no possible solutions would arise. That whatever solutions did arise would be inadequate. That it wouldn't account for a whole set of what-ifs. This is the problem. This is the argument. This is the issue with utilitarianism in general, right? They say, "What? Well, okay, but if we got rid of the, we got rid of the public school system. What if we had some parents who just didn't send their kids to school at all?" Well, okay. I mean, the thing is, well, what if what if that happens now? Oh well, then we get the police out there and we say your kid's truant, and we, we and we and we punish the parents and we uh, make the kid go to school. Okay, well, um... How well hmm. is that working? Yeah, right. Uh, so, is, are they... I mean, if you want to use the utilitarian... Is if we're fighting jail? a utilitarian argument, let's just fucking use the utilitarian argument. The system sucks, and everyone that's saying it looks good is looking at bullshit numbers and isn't seeing the real thing. Well, they don't have anything to compare it to. That's what I, That's my point. There's nothing to compare it to. The numbers don't mean anything. Everyone assumes that we can know how well education is doing by comparing it to itself in past performance manifestations. That's not how you compare it. Everyone assumes education is good if you if it compares well against education results in other countries on standardized tests or something like that. That's not that has nothing to do with education. None of those things do. Education is about cognition, first and foremost, and it's about cognition that is shaped by the environment to maximize an individual's uh, ability to, to realize their type and, and their individual nature in conjunction with each other to make what they do and how they live passionately enjoyable to themselves according to those criteria forestated. One thing I've, in general, 
determined to do is to tolerate longer silences not just tolerate them but to embrace them I think videos I think, I think that's one way that a video becomes fake in the same way that a conversation becomes fake is that people are trying to structure the presence of sound such that it's it's timed a certain way but it's not really fake it's just FE and at that point I felt comfortable talking it because I thought okay well I've given him plenty of time I've given her plenty of time to uh, to say if she was gonna say something and so I'm ready to go again but in the past it's, it's something I'm improving on in the past I would have given you less time for sure and I think that it's one of those things that I want everybody in the world viewer famous person whatever to think about more if you're an FE person like me we instinctually get panicky about that shit you're not it's one of the biggest problems in my relationship because I'm with an FI dog Well, what you need I'm to do... I'm constantly worried that I'm fucking things up, and uh, oh my god, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Stop fucking apologizing! <laughs> yeah, you, you, you definitely need to stop apologizing. Listen, Devaney, there are, are uh, sentences that are useful. Right? Like... When somebody's being a little too bossy or a little too demanding or something like that, what you want to do is say, I'll tell you what, can we take a break from this for one second? I need to go outside and I need to think about a couple of things. And when I return, I'll address your points. And then don't wait for her to agree to it nod turn around and walk out we're not, not talking about bossy situations though what's that we're not talking about bossy situations we're talking about me misreading her thinking something's wrong maybe it is maybe it isn't regardless she doesn't want to talk about it right then and me trying to bring it up to try and make it better because I want to fix it oh yeah well <laughs> Ooh, that one takes a... How old are you? 25. Ooh. You may have a little while before you get over that one. I, I didn't get over that for a long time. Even now. It's not I, easy. Well, I'm, right I'm now. I, 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 I'm doing that right now. I'm, I'm, in fact, engaging. I'm resisting that right now. Because I messed up with Matt last night. My friend Mateo Katsu. I, uh... I made some social mistakes. I made some dumb social mistakes that I'm glad I made now that it's, the sting is a little less potent uh, insofar as I can talk about it and learn from it and make sure I don't ever do such a thing again. But the social mistake I made was basically, you know, his, his record label is releasing my album. And I went over there just to have coffee with him. I don't know. We didn't have anything pretty good we were talking about, but it seemed like a nice thing to do given the occasion and everything. And, but... I didn't, I wasn't mindful going into the conversation. He's an old friend, I know him for a long time, and I, I, I'm usually not mindful anyway, but in this case, I was especially not mindful going into the conversation, which I ought to be in general, thinking pitfalls, possible pitfalls here, possible uh, avenues of conversation, what, remind you, just sort of a general reminder, Eric, don't be too eric -y, okay? Play host Eric, not regular yeah, Eric. That's why, it's hard. Well, anyway, so I roll in there, and we start chatting, and, you know, I've got, in my mind, rolling all these various ways in which uh, talking with famous people can collaborate, link in with, uh, with fucking Miedlina and benefit us both. I've got, I've got Ian T.P. shit going on in my head, right? Meanwhile, he's been and is, is continuing this ongoing uh, INTP shit that is basically 
it's much more it's much more efficient than what NHPs do. Like he's he's sort of following the plan, and even if he's not exactly following the plan, he's not he. There's not a lot of wasted motion for an INTP like there is for an NHP. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah. re- regardless, I go over there and I start and I'm like, well, is Mieslin a corporation? And he's like, no. And I'm like, oh, dude. Well, look, what we should do is we should make it a corporation. And blah, blah, you know, basically try to get off in his business and stuff, right? And try to co-opt his shit into mine. So I wasn't really trying to do that at all. I was just saying, here's ways in which we can make everything you're trying to do more powerful and faster. And you want to take certain actions. You're achieving. Want to achieve certain outcomes. And I can facilitate that and basically and then when I got home I thought it through a bit more and I was like Matt look you I know this is your baby and shit and you don't want to get germs on your baby but your baby needs to get some germs on it or it won't be healthy basically you can't if you hold your project too close to your control center because you want to make sure you control every little detail it's bad Candace did that too I saw Candace do it she's an ESFJ and I see Matt doing it he's an INTP However, what's worse <laughs> is my fucking social just clumsiness in in doing that, you know? And then he was like, well, Eric, I don't want you to come over here. But he basically just said directly what, what obviously I was doing wrong. And I was like, oh, I didn't mean any of that shit. God damn it. What I meant was simply, ooh, let's collaborate effectively but collaborating effectively means not staying behind our respective walls you know the problem is I needed to in that instance and I need to prioritize my own outcomes over my seeing truths you know what I'm saying so it's like if I wanna get him to engage with me in some fashion that's productive and meaningful then the best way for me to do that is not to go over there and throw a bunch of ideas about at him about his shit, right? That's the last thing he's gonna wanna wanna experience. So that's the lesson I learned last night, and I don't think it's a mistake I'm gonna repeat. Hopefully, I mean, probably I'll repeat it like once at least before I fucking learn. Like, usually it usually takes me twice to get burned twice before I learn something really. Well, I, I mean, I'm on, conflicted about I'm sorry, the situation. I, I'm sorry, I, before you start, I, I have one last thing to say, which is, so right now I am not following up with him and saying, dude, I, I really want to make sure you're, we're cool after last night, which is what I normally would do. I'm not actually doing that right now. Go ahead. Sorry. That's okay, so you're not asking this thing after the fact, but I, I see, I, I understand why, I understand how your friend could have seen that situation in a way. I see how, like, the the socialness of it was wrong or whatever. I, I want to, I want to live in a society or a social environment where that's not the case. I want, I want to be able to do what you did and for him to, for it to be, to be expected to be like, oh, you know, we should do this, 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 and this, if you want to, if you don't, whatever. But this is what I'm thinking. What do you think? Like, I, I, I don't see why I should have to feel bad about having done that. I don't see why it should have been wrong to do it in the Okay. Why should be wrong to make sure I haven't hurt someone's feelings afterwards? Okay, but but Tiffany, here's the thing: you gotta. It, it needs to be reflected also on those those moments need to be contextualized. So, what I wasn't thinking when I went and did that was, here's Matt. He's in his room. He's showing. He's got the, up on the screen uh, this big spreadsheet full of of like a database of music bloggers that he contacts and his promotional shit that he does with the record label. He sends out the albums and stuff like that. So, um, he's got that and you know, he's amid a release pattern for Mr. Strauss Learns to Rock and to the extent that we, we weren't, we didn't have anything on the agenda to talk about, but I guess that would be the subject. We did talk about it a little bit. We had, I mean, we had large, most of the evening was spent doing, talking about other things, or at least a good chunk of the evening was, and, um, and so when, when he's talking to me about all his, his stuff that he's doing as a, as a distribution activity, 
What he does not want to hear from me is how he ought to be doing other things, right? He he's saying, "Look, this is the work I've done, and I I want to I want to tell you about it, and I want to talk a little bit about distribution for um, Miedlina, how it works, stuff like that, and and the blogger stuff." What I need to do at that point is either listen and ask questions about, uh, I don't know, about that specifically, or, or otherwise engage with him about it in a way that attends to what he has done for longer rather than what he has not done. As in any, as in any Dom, you and I are going to always think, well, here's some more possibilities. Here's things that you didn't do that you could do. Or here's ways you could do it differently. Yeah, well, most, most people don't want to say, here's my piece of work. And then you go, here's ways you could have done it differently. <laughs> right? Nobody nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> they want but feedback. They some, uh, Tiffany. No, they shouldn't. They, they might. They should They should say, I want to, I'd like some feedback on my work. I have been fighting constructive criticism my whole life, and it's one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made because I've prevented my own progress. No, I know, but there's a, what I'm saying is you have to acknowledge the issue of time frame here and context. That Yeah, there's a time and a place. It depends. If somebody is is has completed a chunk of work and is talking to you about that completed work, then there's a certain amount of attention that needs to be given to that first. Then you can talk about work going that is to come forward, and then you could talk about, if you wanted to, other ways that we could go back and sort of add on to what you've already done there, which is fine. But you don't ever want to talk about somebody is like, well, let's change the work you've done already. That's not a good well, idea. I, I don't think I did that, that really. What? I couldn't hear if that. If you don't want that kind of response, you should I said, well, if you don't want that, you shouldn't be showing the work to an ENTP. <laughs> well, I try to be more than just than just a stereotype of my type, I'm ideally. Joking. I know you are, Tiffany. That <laughs> fuck, oh, my God. You know who does that all the time and I fucking hate it is Abraham. I, 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 know, I know you're joking. You know, he'll say something like, you know, ha-ha, Eric, uh, I don't know, whatever. And it's obviously a joke. Just like and, and then he, well, he, well, he's F.E. Dom, right? So if I don't laugh at it especially, he's concerned immediately that I'm offended, which I'm not. I'm just ignoring him because I'm thinking about something, you know? And then he'll do a little, you know, little F.E. dance for me or something. He's very good well, with the F.E., though. It's the same way you, you know, you just learned this social cue kind of lesson and you're telling me about it and I'm fighting it because I'm an asshole even though I kind of agree. It's like, safe. Hey, this is the right context. This is the right context to be fighty, though, right? Because we're safe. We're both ENTPs. Neither of us are going to get offended. And it's neither of our work, right? Yeah, it's, I, I just throw out ideas. I want to find more people to be with. You want to find I more what? The world. I don't want to I just right. want to find more people like you and say fuck to the rest of the world. Well, we're building it right now, okay? Relax. It takes a little while. I'm trying to... I want to... I, I, I'm I getting grandiose visions of some sort of... of, uh, of a non-centralized... you know, like, local node... Uh, uh, a movement of independent local nodes of changed paradigm that many of which I wouldn't even be aware of but that's that's my grandiose vision of like having enough conversations with enough people and and changing paradigms on a couple of different areas where I want people to think about like for example YouTube my point is I think that this channel has a lot of potential in the following capacity that we haven't exactly addressed specifically but we've, we've talked about things like it a lot which is somebody else wants to put wants to make something and show it on YouTube and wants to get people to look at it. But they don't really want to have a long-term... Let's say I feel like making a typing video and having people see it and commenting on it and having engaging about that. But I don't, I don't have an active YouTube channel. I don't have any channel, videos on my channel. Well, what do you think 
I, 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 then I'm sort of faced with the choice of I can either put up a video and share it with just my family and friends. I can try to build a channel and get build a following so that I do have a viewership. Or I can upload to talking with fans people. And and they'll they'll be a gatekeeper. So if I upload straight up garbage, they won't put it on there. But you know, uh, and they might, and then they can add their own commentary too. So it's like I'll get to have my video. I'll have like feedback on the video on the video, and people can comment. I love it. You know, so I think I think I that's that's what makes it. And then because we we have multiple sub channels, so to speak, music, comedy stuff, whatever. Um, there's no reason why we can't have people submitting all sorts of different things and to the extent that if, if I go and do a little review kind of a thing of it a little bumper front and back then to me that gives the TWFP audience a reason to think that it's legitimately part of talking with fans people even though it doesn't feature the people who are featured most frequently no, I mean, I get it, and I love the idea, and I've agreed with you on it all the way. It's just not going to take off until we have enough subscribers for someone to go, hey, they have, like, 3,000 subscribers. If I give them my video, 3,000 people might watch it. 500's great, but not as great. Okay, well, I, I understand that what you're saying is that this is more likely to get takers as we get bigger, but what I'm saying is, yeah. we, we have, is do we have currently set up the ability for takers to take it? Almost. Okay, we need to get that so that all they have to do is, is drop their file on there, and then we'll deal take it from there, you know. And then, then yeah. we'll then we'll make another video besides this that says, "Here's the thing, guys. Let's say you are well, well you don't have a you don't yeah. have, all the stuff I just said, right? We pitch it exactly like yeah. that. We provide them the exact circumstance in which somebody might want to do this, because I understand and we make it clear that. We totally respect and want to want to have you in our community as a as a neighbor content creator if that's what you want to do. But this is the unique circumstance, or this is the specific circumstance in which somebody very well want, that you very well might want to take advantage of. I think it's a good way to position it. Thank you for watching, talking with famous people. I've been host Eric, and she has been. Not listening, and she has been. What? Oh, let's uh, try this again. Okay, let's pay attention for a second. Let's try this again. I <laughs> thank you for watching, Doctor Fizz people. I have been host Eric, and she has been host Tiffany. Bye for now.